Huge thank you to Squarespace for supporting the channel and sponsoring today's video. So, it's no secret that the Pokemon world is full of secrets. From the mystery of the Ghost Girl to the many questions surrounding Arceus, there is a lot that's left up to the imagination in the Pokemon world, which is part of what makes it so enjoyable. But there is one potential secret that the games might be hiding, which, if it is to be believed, might just be the biggest thing that the Pokemon games have tried to keep swept under the rug, and uncovering this secret is what today's video is all about. So without any further ado, let's just get right into it. So before we try to uncover this big supposed secret, what even is it supposed to be anyway? Well, before I tell you, I want to mention that this is just a theory, and it's a bit of an open-ended one as well. There is a lot that goes into trying to explain this, and I'm not trying to act like this idea is an end-all, be-all one either, so be sure to let me know any thoughts or additions you might have to this theory in the comments below. With that disclaimer in mind, the general idea I'm going to be putting forth in this video is that the Pokemon world and our own world are actually the exact same place, and not only that, but the modern day Pokemon society came about as a result of the fall of our own civilization. Right about now, you're probably thinking this sounds kind of ridiculous, but there is some circumstantial evidence that supports this claim. The first thing that really got me thinking about this as a possibility was the unknown, because honestly, what is any crazy Pokemon theory if it doesn't start with a Pokemon as mysterious as that? Anyway, a little while ago, I was looking at Unknown's Pokedex entries, and the way they read struck me as extremely peculiar. The most distinctive thing about the unknown is that they obviously resemble letters of the Latin alphabet, with one form for every letter, plus two for an exclamation mark and a question mark. Shockingly enough though, it seems that the people of the Pokemon world aren't aware of this at all. In Unknown's Pokedex entries, it mentions how they appear to be shaped like ancient writing, and that their shapes appear to have some sort of meaning. Even literal children who play Pokemon are able to tell that unknown look like letters, so how do the people in the Pokemon world not understand them? And why are their forms referred to as looking like ancient writing? Well, right off the bat, this implies two things, with the first being that the Pokemon world doesn't use the Latin alphabet in their language. This has actually been confirmed outright in recent games, as in newer titles like Sword and Shield, Pokemon has introduced its own unique writing system that first started popping up in the anime around the time of Gen 5. Since its debut into the games, it's become pretty easy to notice, and it solves the issue of people not knowing what the unknown are supposed to resemble pretty quickly, and provides a pretty definitive answer. The Latin alphabet isn't used in the Pokemon world, ergo, those symbols are unfamiliar to the people. But what about the Pokedex referring to the symbols as ancient writing? The Dex even goes so far as to say they look like hieroglyphs, which would make this language in the Pokemon world really old. So given that it's a part of our modern day world, why is it a part of the ancient past in Pokemon? And why do they have their own language now? Well, before we get into that, another thing we have to explain in order for this theory to work is how the Pokemon world and our world could actually be the exact same. There is actually plenty of evidence for this being the case, as especially in the earlier days of the series, references to real-world events, places, and even animals occurred fairly frequently. So based on that, there is some significant connection between the real world and the Pokemon world, and it's even evident that people in the Pokemon world know about the events of our world, such as the man in the Pewter Museum talking about the moon landing, or even the references to real world movies that can be seen on the TVs in the players' houses. So, if the Pokemon world was just some alternate dimension type world separate from our own, why would there be all of this real-world connection? 
In that scenario, it makes more sense that we see these real world things because this is the real world, as opposed to it being an alternate world and the people learning this real world information through some other means. The other important thing to note about these real-world connections in the context of this theory is that there's not a lot of it. It's there, for sure, as we've shown, but it's only in bits and pieces, almost as if it's fading away with the passage of time. In fact, this is exactly what is happening as we see less and less of these real-world connections in the newer games that canonically are taking place farther and farther into the future in relation to the original games where these references were more abundant. So these two separate subjects, being the unknown deck entries and the connections to our own world in the Pokémon world, are both extremely consistent with the idea that the Pokemon world is our world, and that Pokemon's society rose as ours for some reason fell out of existence. Before we continue on to the rest of the theory, I would like to give a shout out to Squarespace, the sponsor of today's video. Squarespace is a powerful online platform that allows you to create your own website for anything you need. Once you've created a website, you can connect with your audience and even generate revenue through gated members-only content. You can also manage your members, send email communications, and leverage audience insights all on one easy-to-use platform. So go to squarespace.com for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash hoopsandhiphop to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Okay, so getting back into the theory, another thing that is consistent with Pokemon being in sort of a post-apocalyptic future of our own world is the fact that the Pokemon world itself is very futuristic. This is evident in things like the Pokeballs, the ability to store Pokemon in PC boxes, the creation of artificial Pokemon like Porygon and Mewtwo, and also the fact that literal time travel has been invented in this world. Pretty much all of that stuff is far beyond what we are capable of today, so it's also safe to say that Pokemon is set in the far future compared to our own world. And going back to the language thing from before, this would explain why our Latin alphabet would be referred to as ancient writing, especially if the real world and the Pokemon world are the same, which really helps to solidify this idea even more. There is one big problem that we have yet to address, however. If all of this really is true, then what the heck caused the downfall of our entire society to the point that the Pokemon world doesn't even use our Latin alphabet anymore? Well, in short, this would be due to the rise of Pokemon. At some point, Pokemon would have had to have come into the picture for some reason and changed the very fabric of how people live their lives. It's not like Charizards and Machamps could just come out of nowhere and start running amok though. Or could they? What if Pokemon as a species just magically appeared somehow, and their tremendous power is what caused the downfall of modern society? If something like this were to happen, I think Pokemon could definitely be capable of this, as the amount of power they have is extremely ridiculous. A Pokemon as small as Whismur can produce noise as loud as a jet plane, and Rhydon is said to be able to topple a building with just one swing of its tail. So if Pokemon just started appearing all over the place with no warning, and people obviously had no knowledge of what they were or how to deal with them, Pokemon could easily destroy the world as we know it today. And believe it or not, there is actually evidence for Pokemon spontaneously appearing out of nowhere. According to an official novelization of the Pokemon anime that was written by the anime's original head writer, Takeshi Shudo, Pokemon spontaneously appearing out of nowhere is exactly how they came to be. In the prologue to the first volume of this novelization, it says, quote, It was a certain night. A faint light shone in the darkness. A faint sound rang through the air. 
and so a certain creature was brought into existence. Meanwhile, in another location, more of the creatures spawned one after another. The creatures' shapes and appearance varied wildly. Among the creatures were quite a few resembling other creatures we were already familiar with. However, they were different to any other creatures that had ever been in this world. Like how humans evolved from apes eons ago, the creatures of this world had their own ancestors, but these creatures were different. Nowadays, we have an encyclopedia to identify these creatures that suddenly appeared in this world. The people of the world soon came to identify these creatures as pocket monsters. This is an official source describing exactly what I just proposed could have possibly happened. It even describes the Pokemon as resembling creatures we were already familiar with, implying this took place in the real world where real animals already existed. However, the prologue then goes on to ask the all-important question. Why? How? What brought the pocket monsters into our world? To explain this mystery is tantamount to explaining the mystery of mankind's origins. So between the real-world connections, the evidence of the Pokemon world being set in a far future, and stuff from our own world being referred to as ancient, and even an official source that backs up the claim of Pokemon appearing out of nowhere, the idea of Pokemon bringing about the fall of our society for the rise of the Pokemon-centric society we see in the games is actually a fairly convincing one that has a decent amount of evidence to back it up. But like the anime novelization said, what brought Pokemon into our world in the first place? Well, for that, we've got to look to the big man upstairs, or I guess I should say Mon, Arceus. Arceus is obviously the god of the Pokemon world, so if anyone could make Pokemon appear out of thin air, it would be him. In fact, Arceus' Pokedex entries constantly talk about it being the one who shaped the world, and while your brain at first probably would take this to mean the actual creation of the world, there are more ways that a god like Arceus could shape the world than just that. What if Arceus, through divine intervention, set to begin the world on a new path through the introduction of Pokemon, and began this new era of civilization by sending them down to Earth to basically wipe everything out and start fresh? Basically, you could look at this a lot like the extinction of the dinosaurs, with us being the dinosaurs, and Pokemon being the giant meteor that came down and killed them all. Arceus could have decided that the time was right for a new civilization to come about, and as such, introduced Pokemon into the world. Being completely caught off guard and not knowing what they were dealing with, our society would have been a sitting duck and would have been all but wiped out by Pokemon, with a small group surviving and eventually figuring out how to capture and train them. With people now realizing the immense power that Pokemon have, they would begin to shape a new society that revolved around the Pokemon, and with that, what came before this new era would eventually be lost to time and eventually be nothing more than the remnants of an ancient civilization that people don't quite understand. Now, I get that that's a lot to take in, and it's also a big claim to make, but if I do say so myself, we were able to put together a pretty solid amount of evidence that makes it fairly believable. But what do you guys think? Do you have anything to add to the theory? Let me know in the comments, and be sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed as well. With that said, I'll be back very soon with another video, so until then, as always, I love you guys, thanks for watching, and I will smell you guys later.